uh, where we left off yesterday. So let's go to our Unity. So yesterday, uh, I was trying to update the high scores. And basically, in the summit high score, if the high score, um, is there's already a record there for that particular user. OK, then we want to take in the current high score. All right. And then based on this current high score, we will then uh, basically check whether the high score is it higher than that. If it's higher than that, then we override it with the higher high score. So the reason why we are doing this is that we don't want people to just anyhow type in a random name. Okay, and when they type in a random name, they might like override some other use other I, I would I wouldn't call it username because they actually don't need to sign in the user account for this game. I mean it's a pretty simple game. I don't really want people to sign in with email or password. So um because of that, um we just check whether that person updating the score is it of a higher score or not. If it's a higher score, I mean I gave you the benefit of the doubt, <laughs> whoever's name it is. If someone uses a, another name with a higher score, then I'm just gonna say that okay, maybe you have a better score. So uh, yeah, we just update with a better score. I mean people will be happier if the score is higher. <laughs> yeah, so over here uh, we only update the high score if it's higher than the previous. Uh, so yesterday's code um couldn't um do this part here because I put here not equals to now. Okay, it's actually this is not correct okay? because if it's not equal to now, this whole part will not be executed at all. Okay, so what we want to do is basically put this in break, uh, in, in inverted commas. Uh, actually, this response.txt returns a literal now as an null as a string. Okay, so if this returns null in a string, it means that there's no entry there, and then we can proceed to ignore this whole thing, and the current high score will be zero. If not, the current high score will be whatever that is on that record. Then we can use it to compare and update it. Okay, so uh, that's what we do over here. Okay, so it's, it's pretty simple, this thing. All right, so with this, um, this is able to get the things done. So let me just show you. So now my high score is two, okay. I'll just show you my database as well. My database is here, okay, in, under data. Okay, so I have JJ and John. Okay, so let me just see. see. Now John is 25. Let's try to update John's high score. Okay, so let's play the game. So for normal mode, okay, my score here is 82. So this is a little high here. Uh, okay, let, let's just submit a score for Apple. So since Apple was not there, okay, so there was a now entry. And then we update with Apple with 82. So let's see our database now. Apple is now updated with 82. Wow, okay. So let's say we want to update like John, okay. We can proceed to update John. So I can, okay, you can see the globe, you can view the global high scores with this button here. You can see that Apple has already been put here. So let me just see John, okay. We submit this as John. And in our database, John is updated to 82 as well. You go to global scores. You can see that uh, it's 882 up there. So to show you that this is like real time, we can actually go to my game on each. I've already updated this version on online. Okay, so with this, okay, let me just mute the sound here. We can see that we can view global scores now. You see Apple and John are already here. So currently the John itself has a value of 82. Okay, let's see what happens if now this other browser has 25. Let's submit this and we call this John. Okay, so we can't see the error message because this already uploaded, but we can see this in the Firebase. And you can see that John is not updated because the 82 score is uh, much higher. Okay, what, what if we want to do like a new user? Okay, let's go back to this. I want to do a new user, maybe say um, XYZ. So we submitted XYZ with a score of 25. And you can see that in the Firebase, there's a new XYZ here with a score of 25. And we can see that if we view global scores, XYZ will be here with 25. Wow, you see, it's updated real time. And this is really awesome. This is really, really cool. And you can see over here when we view global score, we also have XYZ here. Wow, okay. So this really fulfills the, uh, the requirements of the game in terms of the global leaderboards. 
and uh, it basically can update the score to this database over here and then we can retrieve all this and then do a sorting in order to find out who has the best scores okay so actually i wanted to do okay so if you look at the code over here sorry i keep changing windows if you look at the code here uh, i just use up my database uh, basically the database uh, name itself here so anyone with this name here because you see over here our authentication rules Hey, hi, Gotet Seva. Yeah, today will be a short stream. <laughs> I just want to just show what I've done so far for the rules. And uh, basically, I, I couldn't get it to work with REST API. <laughs> so I just want to show you what I've done. Uh, but we already have the global leaderboards working. You can see that it's now based on the based on the database here. We can actually update the global leaderboards everywhere. And yeah, it's cool. You, you can try the game. You can see whether you... You can try to play the game, get the highest score, and then you submit your high score. And then it will be updated on my database here. And I mean, you can see the data here. It'll be updated on the database here. You, you can try it. Yeah. <laughs> so this database, I will already open it to the public to add the high scores. And then when you see global high scores, you will be able to... Oh, the link is it? Yeah, it's here. Uh, let me... Yeah, this is my Twitch. Okay. Yep, this is the link here. Okay, so you can play the game and then you can update your high score. Okay, so I already um, updated my app to do that. And it's all pretty cool. Uh, but the only issue is that anyone with this link that I showed earlier, this link here, can potentially do a put and get request in order to update the table. Okay, this real-time table. So because um, it's because we did the read and write to be true, means anyone can edit it. So ideally, we want to have something like this. Auth UID not equals to now means like the user needs to be authenticated before they go inside the uh, real-time database. Okay, so usually read and write not equals to now means any authenticated user, like if you sign in with your Google mail, your Facebook mail, or just simply a user and password. There are a few ways to authenticate using the uh, Firebase authentication. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you try to go into hard mode, yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I haven't got much feedback for hard mode yet, but my friend said it was fun, <laughs> one of my friends, yeah. So, yeah, so anyway, I was saying about the Firebase uh, authentication rules. So once you do the production ready rules, essentially, we would like to have something like this, uh, where you only read and write if the, like, if the JSON content itself okay, is based on that user's UID itself. So only if the header here is of the user's UID displays, okay, there will be a unique UID assigned when the user logs, logs in. So every time the user logs in, there will be a unique UID. Okay, ideally what we want to do is we want to make the uh, authentication not equals now means uh, it's like this one, means the user is authenticated and the file that you are trying to read and write should be the same uh, as the user's authentication. Okay, however, because in the high score table uh, for read, you generally want to read everyone's scores. So uh, in the read, you don't have to put in this part here if you are doing a high score table. So yeah, something like this. Yeah, I guess we could do something like this also. We can make everyone read the data, but write the data is only when you need to update your own user ID. And this kind of thing would already, like, so if this is the user ID, then the username itself will already be changed. So every time you submit your score and then you change your name, okay, you will change based on the same user ID, okay? And then over here, everything will be uh, changed to the new name. So when you update your name itself, it wouldn't interfere with other people's name. So that is the ideal case, okay? That's the ideal case. Okay, so I tried to use uh, the REST API to do it. So there's this thing called uh, Identity Toolkit. Uh, this is the, the one that uh, Google like kind of stopped supporting since 2016. Okay, and in this Identity Toolkit, you can use like sign in with password, sign in anonymously, and so on. I mean, you can look at the docs for REST API. And then what you need to do is just to post in with the, this payload, email, password, return secure token. And you should be able to get this uh, ID token, which will be used in your query 
to the database. So you can you can do your JSON query, then you just add in an access token at the back. Okay. So I have tried it, okay, but unfortunately I'm not sure what I did wrong. So I can show you the code that I did. Okay, over here. I tried to do this. So like I have an email password, okay, and return secure token true. And then once I do this, right? Okay. It's not as exactly returning me anything. So, okay, there's an API over here. How do you get this API? Okay, so this API is, is uh, simple. You go to Think Like, you just, you can add an app. Okay, so usually you add a web app. Okay, then you can, you, you can register an app here. Okay, then after you add, register your app, you should be able to get an API for your particular app itself. Okay, so yeah, so there's something like this API key here. So, okay, I guess. Oh, this is new. Okay, I I didn't see this screen just now. But okay, since they gave me this screen, let's. Oh, actually, this key is exactly the same as what I had just now. Yeah. So, okay. So if you look over here let's go back to so we could actually like put the key here okay and then we take this in as the request packet and then in the response packet we should be able to get our stuff so let's call on that ticket in our okay, let's try again to see whether it works because just now i tried uh before i stream i tried to do this authentication Kind of didn't work <laughs> yeah so this is the old authentication uh the new authentication i would like to highlight is to use this thing called the okay before i try it out let me just highlight what what you should do for future ones it's just that uh, to do this it kind of requires the sdk yeah and the sdk is the firebase sdk which is only meant for ios android and also maybe web pages yeah but not not for webgl so there are some bypass ways uh you could you could like use JavaScript and use the WebGL for Unity to do this and then you link it back to Unity. That's one way to bypass. Hi, the best. Yep. And I'm just uh, detailing what I tried to do to authenticate my database and uh, kind of failed. <laughs> so I'm just trying to say what I did. And yeah, I would say that in order to do like proper authentication, it's best to use the uh, SDK that uh, Google has come up with. Because in the SDK, they actually um, is more native and it integrates well. So in the SDK, you can do your password signing, authentication. You can query the database really, really easily. I mean, you just need to copy and paste some lines of code and you're done. Yeah. So I guess if I want to do a full scale game that requires you to log in, you know, and uh, like have character stats and then like maybe daily uh, gifts you can claim, those kind of stuff. Uh, if you want to do something like that for your game, I think it's best to do it in the form of an app right now, okay? Because uh, that is supported with the with the Firebase SDK. Yeah, if not, if you have to do my method, uh, it's difficult to get the authentication done. Yeah, because the earlier way of doing this identity toolkit doesn't seem to work for me. Yeah, I'm not sure whether I did it wrongly, but this method kind of didn't work. Yeah, so I suspect you need to use uh, this thing called the OAuth tool. Yeah, so I tried to search for all this OAuth tool. Okay, so OAuth tool um, access token generation Firebase. So we want to generate an OAuth tool token. Okay, we need to authenticate our request with this token. Okay, then there are basically two ways to generate it. One is using this OAuth token. One is using Firebase ID token, okay? So uh, I I couldn't get this uh, OAuth token thing to work. You need to use this thing called the JavaScript uh, WJWT. is basically an encryption method to encrypt. Sorry, J, J is JSON, yeah. This is an encryption method to encrypt JSON, okay? You need to use a third-party library to do this, all right? And in order to do that, uh, yeah, after you, you get this, you will be able to get back your access token. And then when you query the database, you just need to put this thing here, access token equals to whatever access token that you have gotten from this OAuth tool. 
So OAuth two is a, uh, it's not only for, it's not only for Firebase. OAuth two is meant for most Google APIs. Okay, I don't know whether the diagram is here. Yeah, your user you request for your SS token. Okay, and then they will give you back some code. Give you the code for token. Get the token. Use the token to call API. Okay, I mean. It could be faster. It could be like that. Request, okay, token, give you back. All right, and then you can use the token to call the Google API. So this is uh, a typical way of doing this. And um, it is kind of complicated to implement it yourself. I mean, I'm not an expert in HTTPS uh, services, much less encryption. So uh, the SDK, where, where, where was it? This is the, uh, this. Firebase SDK thing, S and Firebase off dot Unity package, which does all this thing for you, which is really good. It's just unfortunate that the Unity SDK does not come uh, with WebGL. Yeah, maybe in the future they decide to implement it, but as of now, you know, <laughs> just got to deal with limited functions, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if someone could figure out how to do this, uh, that would be good. For WebGL, I mean, I guess one way will be to use the bypass um, to use the JavaScript web SDK. Okay, instead of the WebGL, you use the web. You modify your index.html in in this. Uh, you you can you can add a JSON library and then a JS lib and then you modify your what do you call that? The I can't remember where it is, but you can modify your index.htm in order to use the SDK. Yeah, but I think that's too much of a, a bypass. Like it kind of feels weird. Uh, it would be good if we could have like an SDK directly for WebGL. Uh, okay, but anyway, this is OAuth 2. Okay, so back to the game. Uh, now I'm trying to use like the old method, this identity toolkit. Okay, although it's like not really supported anymore since 2020, but it, uh, it is still supposed to be able to, I mean, they, they did not depreciate it you are supposed to still be able to use this to sign in. So let's try again. Okay, let's try it. So I I put in the... Oh, look at that. Identity crew kit. Verify password response. ID token. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. It's working, it's working. Okay, so oh, I'm not sure what, what change did I do, but... Looks like it's working now. Okay, then we can we can try we can try to do this. So I'll try to use identity toolkit to sign in. Okay, so over here, uh, I sign in with password and okay. Why I can sign in with password? Okay, it's because it's because in this uh data. Uh, sorry, in the authentication, okay, I have put the sign in method with email password enabled over here. Okay, I tried to do anonymous just now. Maybe I can try again. But the email password, I get a trial at user.com and the password is trials, T-R-I-A-L-S. So, wow, okay, it's working. I'm quite impressed. Okay, so over here, we do have an ID token that comes out here. So we need to store this ID token. Okay, and it expires in like an hour. Okay, and then like this is meant to refresh the token. Okay, so... I guess uh, we don't really need to refresh. I guess like when people want to submit the score or what, um, I pre I think they should do it within an hour. Okay. <laughs> if not, if, if let's say you're unable to do it, maybe every time we want to submit the score, we do a sign-in. I mean, that is possible. Okay, so now that we have this, let's print response.id token. Okay. Because, uh, okay, let, let's create a string. Oh, okay. This is pretty cool. I don't know what I did differently. I guess, uh, I guess in my, in my project overview just now, perhaps what I did was when I created the app. Okay. When I created the app, I did not, I did not set up Firebase hosting. Yeah. Maybe that's why I could get the, maybe that's why I could get the ID token. So anyway, now I got my ID token. Uh, let's go back to the documentation. So the ID token will be here. So this will give me a Firebase authentication ID token for the authenticated user. 
which I can then use for all my other queries later. So let's see. Um, XX token Firebase. Yeah, so I can authenticate my uh, request with this access token equals this access token. So let's try to do this. Okay, let, let's stop this first. Okay, in my script over here, okay, I, I do have a ID token here. Oh, sorry, this is my, uh, as what I said earlier, this key um, actually refers to the, uh, what do you call it? This is the API key. Okay, API keys are traditionally kept secret for some applications. Uh, for Firebase, actually, it's, it's not that uh, bad unless you are using this kind of REST API thing because if you give away your key like that, you can potentially sign in anonymous users as well. Okay, but it's okay because this game this game has no confidentiality or anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, feel free to use this key, I guess. <laughs> it doesn't affect me. Okay, so over here, um, we can print the response to ID token, but more importantly, let's store this Okay, so we have a string ID. Oops, uh, what, what happened? So uh, typically the ID token is valid for one hour. Okay, you can refresh it. Okay, so I, what I'll do is I have a string ID token here. Okay, so maybe I'll put this as now just, you know, just to be safe. So in my request, okay, so this is my API itself. In my request, okay, after we authenticate in my request for submit high score and everything, okay, we can then put plus question mark. Okay, what was that quote? Access token equals to access token. So uh, the access token is called ID token. Yeah, so we could do this for all our requests. So so you can use this way of uh, getting the access token. You can actually, um, because when you when you did this, uh, you can use multiple methods. Okay, maybe I can compose the link here to the YouTube video if I, when I upload it. But it is not the recommended way to do it because uh, the recommended way is using the O of two authentication, which is the the newer form of authentication. I think it's possible to do it with. Uh, with REST API. I just haven't figured out how to do it. But uh, this identity toolkit still works. So I mean, for now, we can still use this. Yeah. It would be good if like I could find a tutorial online that can help me to do this. Uh, look at this. You can even sign in anonymously. Yeah. So for our game, um, we don't really need people to key in their email and username. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of an overkill for a snake game like this. Maybe if it's an RPG, maybe, yes, you don't want your hard-earned progress to be lost. You could ask people to sign up. Okay. So uh, let us just try to see whether this method works. Okay. So I put the access token parameter at the back here. Okay. And this should work. Let's try to, to clear the errors. Response helper does not contain a definition for ID token. Is my ID token not a string? It is a string, right? So it means that once I do this get here, my ID token should be... Mm, I don't know why. If I put to a string, will it help? Okay, I don't think it's a matter of two string. Yeah, it might be because of the dot then. Did I like delete my bracket accidentally? Dot gets. Yeah. Hmm. 
like that. Dot gets. Dot then. All right, this is okay. Ah. Okay. I don't think I made an error here. I think th I think this is correct. I think this is correct. Yeah, we just need to do something like this. Response helper does not contain a definition for ID token. Are you missing an ID token? One four seven thirty two. Let's take a look. Ah, it's this one here. Okay, so I guess in the response dot text. Okay. I'll need to like find a way to pass this entire output. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you see over here, we do have ID token here. So maybe, okay, three response dot. Maybe it's in the dictionary form, yeah. If not, I might need to do this whole thing out as a data structure. Uh, you know what? Let's just do a system serializable. Okay, and then over here, let's just just put everything as strings, I guess. Public class details. Public string kind. Public string. Local ID, public string email, public string display name, public string ID token. What else is there? Public. Okay, this is a bool. Registered. It's a bool because there's no quotation marks here. Okay, public string refresh token. And our public string expires in. So with all this, we can actually construct the class. Let's take a look. ID token email refresh token expires in local ID. Supposed to only return five though. <laughs> okay, no, this is the wrong one. Yeah, it's already written this entire thing here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six views. One, there's a kind view over here that is like kind of not reflected. I guess I'll just follow whatever the server returns to me. Yeah, it is fine. So uh, let's go back to our code. Then over here, when we do this post, we can do off the class details, which will then return back in this format. Okay, so I guess we cannot do this text anymore. So because the class is not a text anymore, so we we, we can do this. I mean, I could also do a try deserialize, but I think it's fine because this kind of thing is uh, doable using the JSON, um, Unity JSON converter as well. So let's try to do this. So this is my ID. Okay, let's try to submit high score. PTP. See my database. Uh, let's see, where's my sign in map? No, I want to go to my real time database. So I should have a PTP coming here. Okay, 
it seems like the access token kind of thing didn't really work. Yeah, I mean, I, I did have the ID token already over here. But once I did this, XX token equals to this. Now, maybe let's just. Okay, so XX token equals to XX token. Oh, this is Google co op to Actually, ours is off. Because uh, access token is for is for Google, so maybe let's just change this to off authenticate, and then we'll try again to see whether it... okay. But you know what? To just make sure that it can work, let's just cop let's just use this security rule where where you know our uh, read and write we must be verified. Then we can do the read and write. Okay, so that over here, yeah. so we publish the rule. Okay, so it means that you need to be authenticated to read and write. Uh, it, also, it also means that whoever is playing my game right now, okay, we just try this now. It means that whoever is playing my game cannot submit anything because the access will be denied. So you look at my data now. So this now I posted AX something. It, 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 that isn't updated because I specified you need authentication. So now let's see with my user now authenticated here using the ID token of Firebase. It's not OAuth 2, it's just ID token because we are using the identity toolkit. Okay, let's try to submit a high score here. Let's call it A, B, C, D, E. And let's take a look. Wow, look at that. We managed to make it work. Oh, so now we have a fully authenticated database. So it means that I mean, I could even ask the user to sign in with an email and a, and a password, and I can authenticate it using this uh, sign in with email password, and then you have to key in their email and password, and then we will get back the token, okay? Or if the user has already, um, or if the user is already uh, a username, I mean, if the user is already uh, in the account itself, we can ask him to sign in with his password, email and password, then we can get back also the same ID token. Okay, so if the ID token is uh, basically gone, okay, so we need to like sort of remember to refresh the token. Okay, so a Firebase off refresh token for the authenticated user. Okay, I'm not too sure about this. Okay, uh, when how do we do this refresh token? I mean, maybe I can cover it on another uh, stream. Okay, but so far, this is good. We are able to use the REST API, okay, to generate a token. Okay, this is our token. Okay, and in this token, okay, using this trial email, which I use for my game. Okay, because honestly, I don't really care what email you use or what user you use. I mean, I could make everyone sign in before they do the snake light, but I don't think that's really necessary. Okay, it's a very simple game, but for a more complex game, oh, you see, now I realize that actually we are still able to use identity toolkit and it can still work. Yeah, so yeah, but I do encourage people to use the SDK if possible. Oh, sorry, wrong page. SDK if possible. Okay, then we can use the we can then use the latest method, the OAuth two method, in order to authenticate it. Okay. Uh, if not, that's the end for the stream today. Uh, manage to use the so basically now my database. Okay can only be read and write with an authenticated user, okay? So over here is like that. Okay, we only can read and write with an authenticated user. And now, yeah, we do gain some protection against uh, people trying to, like, you know, use the database for any like, malicious intent, okay? All we need to do is to make sure that um, they don't have any information about what's the sign-in username and the sign-in password which I'll probably change uh, once I like, really do the game proper. I mean, you can have, and I probably shouldn't uh, release the API, okay? Because then you can use that to sign in anonymously in order to change the stuff in this database. But yeah, we got a basic um, database working with the ID token of the Firebase ID. Okay, and that's pretty cool. I, I actually thought it couldn't be done. 
but it turns out that you know what <laughs> you can do it <laughs> okay yep and uh that, that'll be all for today and see ya